Hi, everyone, everyone. Um, hope you all can hear me and see me. Uh, we'll just give a few more minutes since there's just about 20 attendees at the moment. Uh, yeah, we'll wait for about another two minutes and then we'll get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar. So we have been from J20 to holidays, we have been doing this series of uh, called Hidden Secrets of Sri Lanka. And it's mainly done to promote unknown destinations and not the so-called popular destinations such as the Cultural Triangle or Tandy or Norelia Yala. Whereas we have so much more that Sri Lanka can offer. And uh, that's why we from J20 Travels and J20 to holidays came together and thought of sharing some of the experiences which one could uh, uh, take in the lesser known destinations. And also by slowing things down, what I mean is there's this new trend called slow tourism, which I will be uh, explaining in my next slide. So that's the whole concept of this, where the visitors or the guests are compelled to stay at least for about three nights because these destinations have so much on offer that you can't just cover it by doing for one night or two nights. So you need to spend time, spend time in one area. Then you, um, it's, it's a new concept where you just spend time in one area and you experience that destination as a whole, rather than just going from one place to another and mainly spending your holiday in a bus or in a car. So, to start off with, I'll just explain what slow tourism uh, really means. Um, so basically, it is an approach to travel that emphasizes connection to local people, cultures, food, and so on. It uh, relies on the idea that a trip is meant to educate and have an emotional impact while remaining sustainable for local communities and the environment. So slow tourism is characterized by reducing mobility and by taking time to explore local history and culture while supporting the environment. Also, the traveler's main goals are relaxation, self-reflection, escape, novelty seeking, engagement, and discovery. So basically, these destinations, which I will be going to talk about um, with my uh, coming slides, it's uh, Velavaya, Putwil, and Jaffna. So these destinations, as I said earlier, are destinations which you have to spend minimum of three nights, or you could even spend five nights to a week if you wish to, because you're not gonna be bored. You have so much to discover. You have so many activities, so many experiences on hand. So um, I'll be taking you through uh, some of those, not all of it, but most of it. And uh, yeah, if there's any questions you guys like to ask, please put your hands up and, uh, uh, even in between the presentation, I would be happy to answer any questions you all have. So the first destination uh, I'll be talking about is Vellavaya. So Vellavaya is actually a hidden treasure trove of adventure for me personally. I love that city, it's so beautiful. Uh, it's actually one of the most beautiful destinations in Sri Lanka for the climate. It's not too cold, not too hot. It has beautiful mountains on the backdrop, paddy fields, the people are nice. And it's, you get a pure local experience there. So uh, yeah, it's uh, located over here. It's been like east of the central mountains. And uh, it has from basically from magnificent waterfalls, ancient royal palaces, to take in a stroll across the village, this town is a one-stop travel destination that can fulfill every explorer's deepest desires. Um, yeah, so these, this picture really show, it's a picture I took in Jetwin Tadru Keta. This was, this is no edit. The skies are this beautiful. You actually see skies like this. It's, the pollution levels are bare minimum. And it's, you really get a good feel of the nature and the environment is really, really amazing. So just to talk about the accommodation, Jetwin has a property there called Jetwin Kadruteta. And this property 
is an agro eco luxury hotel. It consists of 25 dwellings and it's a 60 acre property out of which 50 acres are uh, for paddy cultivation. And uh, yeah, this is one of the most iconic Japan properties, but which offers butler service to, um, yeah, we offer many, many curated services to experiences through Jetwin Kadru Keta. These are some of the experiences, paddy farming. I mean, many people now have lost the real touch of traditional paddy farming in Sri Lanka. Everything has become very modernized and mechanized. Whereas here at Jetwin Kadru Keta, the farmers, they are still use the local practices which their ancestors, their grandfathers, their great grandfathers have taught them through the lines and which today they still um, practice. So here at, uh, we grow only heirloom varieties of rice which are native to Sri Lanka. These, uh, we have about 12 to 13 varieties of uh, native rice varieties and uh, one it's more healthier and uh, it's, uh, it's actually, uh, it's all organic. So we don't use any chemicals. So we also uh, give this experience to the guests and many love it because they haven't seen such things in uh, Europe or in other countries or even in Sri Lanka because uh, other places do not offer this sort of uh, experience. And also in Villavaya, the bird watching is um, is something which many people thought about. I mean, the peacocks, you really wait. I mean, you, you, you don't need to set an alarm when you're in uh, Villavaya because you'll hear peacocks just making noises all throughout early mornings. And uh, they are one spectacular bird to look at, especially when they, uh, the, what do you call, they uh, expand their wings and do the dance, it's a magical sight, and you can experience it, a guaranteed experience to see uh, peacocks. And also there are so many endemic birds in uh, Velavaya, for example, the Sri Lankan gray hornbill, the Sri Lankan hanin parrot, the Sri Lankan emerald colored uh, parakeet, the Sri Lankan small barbet. So it's a birder's paradise. Uh, and you don't have to go far, it's just you just go for a walk, uh, leisurely walk and you'll see endemic birds to um, so many other varieties of uh, birds and butterflies and so many varieties, uh, so many uh, uh, birds, yeah. So from Velavaya is, uh, since it's a rural area, there are so, uh, there are wonderful heights and threats which one could uh, engage in from the adventurous people to the casual 20 minute, 30 minute normal walk at leisurely speed. And um, yes, yeah, so we, there's a Puna de la mountain range. It's the lowest mountain range of the central highlands. So it's not that hard for, um, I mean, you don't have to be very fit to do it. It's a very leisurely climb. As you can see in this photo, it's not like you're climbing uphill on a daunting scale, but it's more casual, it's very relaxed and the scenery and the views you get there, it's really, really amazing. So we also do cycling tours in Villavaya. I mean, it's, Villavaya is best explored on a bicycle since there's hardly any road traffic or uh, there are a lot of by roads like this, which uh, you can see in this picture uh, uh, next to the lake or the waterbeds. So it's a really beautiful experience where you can just go on a nice cycle, cycle ride and enjoy the fresh air and the bird life to the nature to just get a whole local experience of what would be, what a village life would be in Sri Lanka. And uh, you can also cycle to the level of waterfall which is a bit of a challenge in uh, bicycle ride for, I would say the less fit, uh, hope I won't uh, <laughs> be a bit rude to anyone, but uh, 
yeah, it's about a 45 minute uh, bicycle ride to the level of waterfall. But uh, that, that cycle ride is actually one of the most uh, stunning uh, experiences I have personally done, where you uh, cycle through the forest patches and then through a small village, and then you go on, you go uphill the mountains, and then afterwards you you jump, you come to this uh, a level of waterfall where you can have a swim. It's not that deep; it's about four four feet probably the water levels there when it's uh, rainy season, and it's very safe. You can have a picnic lunch or a picnic breakfast or picnic high tea. It's it's a great place to just go spend a couple of hours, relax, take pictures, and yeah. So moving on to the more uh, uh, archaeological and historic sites in Velavala, in Velavaya. So Budruvajala is about a 20 minute a journey by car from Velavaya town. And um, so the translation of Budruvajala is literally uh, the Budu means the Buddha and Ruva means the image and Gala means stone. So it's it's an ancient rock which was carved over thousands of years ago. And uh, there are seven, there are seven um, iconic statues carved on this rock. And it's a great place to go and see such uh, beauty from our ancestors in the past. So the Malida Villa is also another iconic uh, uh, place in Vellavaya. It's about 10 minutes to probably no, probably sorry, uh, about 40 minutes from Vellavaya town by car. And you can just go there, spend about three hours. And uh, it consists of the tallest freestanding Buddha statue in Sri Lanka. It was made uh, out of limestone about thousands of years ago. And then they only discovered it in 1950. And then uh, in 1989, they restored it back to, try to restore it back to what it was by a small, small patchwork. So they have two statues. One is the Avalokiteshvara standing with the statue, which is this one in this picture. And this is the main statue, which, are, which is the tallest freestanding with the statue in Sri Lanka. So not many people actually know that this exists because people normally go to Anuradhapura, Polo Naru and see the statues there. But Mali Javila, the standing Buddha statue is one of the nicest and the most iconic freestanding Buddha statues in Sri Lanka. And also it's one of the tallest freestanding Buddha statues in the world. There are not many places which have uh, freestanding Buddha statues like this. So this is one of the few places in the world where you can see and uh, experience this sort of uh, great history. Another experience you can do in Velavaya is the Dioluma waterfall. So Dioluma means rapid flow of water in English. It's the second highest waterfall in Sri Lanka. It's about a 40 minutes uh, drive by car from Velavaya town. So it's again another perfect spot to go, spend about three to four hours there. We go in the morning, uh, do a small hike. I mean, the, it's a bit of a challenging climb to go right to the top, but right to the top is where the Uda Diuluma, which features a natural rock pool. Uh, and uh, this is a great place to, again, have a nice picnic lunch, go there. You can also have a small dip in the water and uh, the views you get out you get from the top is breathtaking especially on a clear day you can see miles and miles ahead without any uh, barriers so it's a great experience and the waterfall is always flowing at this speed hence the name uh, the Aluma. And also from Velavaya, Ella is just a 30 minute uh, drive by car for all those, because Ella, I think most of us know that is one of the most 
up and coming popular destination, especially for adventure tourism, for the backpackers to the luxury. It has many things on offer in Ella. Uh, it's about, yeah, 30 minute drive from Ella via town. You get the Ravana Falls, the Ella Rock, the little, the little Adams Peak, the Demodora Nine Arch Bridge, which I think most of us have seen, which has the iconic uh, Nine Arch Bridge where you can take your Insta shots. And also you, there are, you get a lot of good cafes and bars and also a few pool clubs where you can go for a day. If you're spending five nights in Melavaya and if you feel a bit bored and you want some action, you can go to Ella, have a nice day out there, enjoy the good food, the good drinks, some music, do a bit of adventure. There's uh, the first uh, zip line in Sri Lanka is in Ella called the Flying Ravana. You could, you could do that if you're an adventure freak or adventure jerky. And uh, yeah, you can have a good time in Ella. Also from Vallavaya, if you're into wildlife, the Viheratella National Park is just one hour or so from Vallavaya. So you can also go to Viheratella. It's, it's Yala Block 5. So you do spot the leopard and it's a very, very less crowded park. You hardly see many jeeps. You probably be, there'll probably be about five jeeps a day when it's busy. I mean, it's not like Yala where there's hundreds or thousands of jeeps a day. So Viharadala, you get the elephants, you get the salt bear, basically you get every animal you get in Yala ever since it's uh, Yala block five. And also the Udawalave National Park is just one and a half hours from Bellavaya. Udawalave, as most of you might know, is famous for elephants. And uh, yeah, it's, you, can, you can do Udawalave and Beherajala probably the same day, come back, a day for wildlife. And yeah, so that's all I have for Bellavaya. And as, as you might know that, as you would have seen, there's so much on offer where you stay in Vellavaya and you can do all these different, different excursions, be it wildlife, be it archeological sites, or be it just to enjoy the natural beauty of that Sri Lanka has on offer. You can do all this. It's basically like staying in, for example, people stay in Dambulla and then they go to Polonaru, Anuru, Adapura, all those excursions while uh, staying in Dambulla or Sigiriya. So Vellavaya as well, we can make it a, destination where you're based there and from there you do these excursions and uh, you experience Sri Lanka which hasn't been really touched much uh, to, uh, in, the, in the past so it's a new option it's a new destination and it's a great destination for up and coming travelers so from Vellavaya I'll be moving on to Portuville so Portuville uh, is uh, located on the southeast coast of Sri Lanka. The east coast of Sri Lanka has a great reputation for its breathtaking beaches. However, people thought that it's just the beaches that Portuville or the east coast has on offer. However, uh, so that's not the case. There's plenty of archeological sites, wildlife, scenery. So the east coast, like Villavaya, has so much on offer. Uh, from Colombo, it's, uh, it's about a six hour journey. Uh, now with the Matala, high, with the highway coming up to Matala, you get out of Matala and then it's about uh, another three hour drive from the Matala exit. So it's a bit of a drive, but once you go there, it's totally worth it because you can stay in Portuville for three nights to five nights to even a week and you have so much on offer. You can do, you can, and you have to break it down. You can't just go to Portoville and then do some, go to the Kumana Park or the Kudum Vitella. You have to break it down. You have to relax. You have to uh, take your time and uh, do these uh, tours. So, Jetwin Hotels has uh, two properties in Portoville. Uh, the, the hotel being uh, Jetwin Surf, which consists of 20 cabanas. It's a eco-luxury property with a unique design 
and using only 100% Sri Lankan uh, material. And also uh, we manage a property, Kopitral Beach House by Jitwin, which is adjoining Jetwin Surf, a beautiful uh, four bedroom villa, which is right here. And as, the, as this drone picture shows, so you get this beautiful bay all to yourself. It's like a private villa right on the beach with a huge garden and uh, great for families, for couples, for basically you have it to yourself. You have the beach to yourself. You have the villa to yourself and uh, yeah, great place. So for the experiences in Portugal, obviously surfing is the one of the most uh, thought about things on the East Coast. So one of the best surfing destinations in the world is Arugam Bay. And Arugam Bay is just a five minute drive from Portoville. It's just literally the next uh, bay. Oh yeah, from Portoville to Arugam Bay. It's, you can walk, but it's a bit of a, uh, it's, it's quite hot there. So I won't recommend walking. You can take a bicycle right there. It's about say 15 minute by bike, a bicycle. And, uh, yeah, you go there, surf. The best uh, time for surfing is from May to September. Uh, although you can really surf year round, it depends on uh, whether you're a professional or how, how uh, good you want to, your waves to be. So you also get these boat safaris in uh, Portville and the Urani River. Uh, Urani River and Portugal Lagoon is just about five minutes by tut tut, or about ten minutes, fifteen minutes by bicycle to these uh, to the lagoon and the river. And um, this is great for bird watching, and you you can see elephants as well sometimes, but that you have to be really lucky to see an elephant. But for bird watching, you see lots of crocodiles, and the good thing about this is the as you can see in this picture, it's all canoed. So there's no motor engine. Uh, it's not a fancy boat where you go and uh, really disturb where the water is polluted, nothing like that. So it's not the most comfortable experience per se, but it's a very natural experience where you don't cause much noise. You don't um, do, many, um, do much pollution to the water. Uh, as there's no oil and uh, whatnot. So it's great for bird watching. And uh, it's, it's a very relaxing experience. It's ideally you have to go about from 4.30 to 5 p.m. You go on it for about one hour and uh, you just enjoy the whole uh, experience by just, you can even fall asleep. It's, it's very relaxing because you're in the water and you just hear the, flow of the water and then you just hear birds chirping or you might see a crocodile swim by you, which we have seen so many times. It sometimes freaks people out, but uh, it's an excitement on its own. And yeah, as I was saying, bird watching is one of the main highlights in the East Coast of Sri Lanka. Uh, it's actually a perfect place for bird watching. And the, the highlight would be in the Kumana National Park, where there's a big waterway and you get heaps and heaps of migratory birds coming there. So uh, for all you bird lovers, the East Coast is a haven since there's so much of bird life to see over at Kumana. And also when you're just driving around the Portoville or the Arudam Bay area. So moving on to the archaeological sites which are available in the east, uh, Madhul Mahavihara is about a 20 minute drive from Portoville. And uh, so this was uh, taught into folklore, the complex where King Kavantis married Viharama Devi. So this is no facts, but it has to be true because the word Madhul Mahavihara also means, Madhul means wedding and Mahavihara means the great temple. So uh, yeah, this is a, one of the highlights to see in, uh, in the East. And also the 
uh, one of the most uh, unique points is the moonstone, which is present. So the moonstone is, I think, should be somewhere here. There's, I don't have a picture of it. But uh, normally in Sri Lanka, the moonstones you find in Polonnaruwa, Anuradhapura, those sort of areas where the earlier kingdoms used to rule. And in this particular moon, uh, moonstone only, where you find uh, a rider on the back of the elephant. So it's not common at all. It's the only place in Sri Lanka where you find this. So it's pretty exciting to go there and have a look for yourself uh, on that uh, great work of history. You also get the Muhudu Mahaviharya. The Muhudu Mahaviharya, according to the great legend, it's basically the start story of Madhul Mahaviharya. So Muhudu Mahaviharya is where, it's, it's actually a five minute drive from Portugal. And uh, the location is where Princess Devi was to show. So Princess Devi later became Vihara Mahadevi. And uh, basically the fourth law is that she was pushed, uh, put to sea by her father in order to stop the great disaster which was occurring from the sea. And then she, I think it was from Kalania and from Kalania area in Kalambu, she came down and landed uh, here near Potuville. And it's now a temple called Mudu Mahaviharya. It's a beautiful temple. You can go there, spend some time and it's right on the beach. So I would recommend to go early morning or late evening since it can get a bit hot. There's also the Sastra, Sastra Vila Viharya. This is a stone inscription dating back to 1 AD. So as you can see in this picture, uh, these stone inscriptions were back in the day by the monks or the kings. So this is also a real great uh, piece of history, which is not promoted much by most people in Sri Lanka. So uh, these are things which we can really uh, promote and uh, educate ourselves together with the tourists, together with the locals on, uh, because these have so much of historical value. These, you will never get to see something, something like this, but this is basically they're carving on a rock, on a huge rock, all carved by hand, I presume. So yeah, this is also about uh, 20 minutes from Portoville. So we can cover all these archeological sites within a few hours. It's not a long time at all. This probably is my uh, personal favorite uh, experience in Portugal, the Kudumbijala Monastery. So Kudumbijala is about one hour's drive from Portugal. You can combine Kudumbijala and Kumana National Park together since Kumana National Park is about 20 minutes from Kudumbijala. It's on the way, same road. And Kudumbijala built in the second century AD for months. And uh, to date as well, there are a few monks who live there and they practice silent meditation. So as um, guests, we have to remain very silent when we do this experience. We can't make a lot of noise because it's an active um, monastery for monks. There are a few foreign monks as well, uh, whom we have seen, I think some from Australia, Germany, and they basically live there. They, their entire lives, they practice meditation, silence, and it's a really, really calm and uh, wonderful experience. And the summit is this. So it's not a big uh, climb. It's qualitates, though the picture uh, is not the best picture. I couldn't, sorry about it. I couldn't find a, a proper picture with the path. There is a small pathway uh, which is not the most easiest since it's like the footprints are carved on the rock, which was back in the day. And the size of the footprints are like probably like say average five, size five footprint. So you have to like basically like put tiny steps and climb, but it's a really, really great climb and not a very hard climb as well. It's about say 15 minute climb to the top and the views you get 
once you reach the summit uh, out of this world. Um, we did, uh, my brother did a fam tour with some travel made agents about two years ago. And actually most of the travel made agents said that this experience is better than climbing Sigiriya because there's hardly any people here. You, I mean, we climbed it in February and there was, it was just the 10 of us or 12 of us who climbed it. You basically have the whole rock to yourself. And once you go on top, it's so relaxing. It's so peaceful. You see, I mean, you see miles and miles of so much of beauty. And you also see a lot of rocks, smaller size rocks like this in the near vicinity, which is breathtaking. And uh, it's, I mean, you can compare it with Syria and sadly, it's still not um, known among many uh, agents or many, even the locals hardly know about this. So it's a great, uh, great uh, experience. If you don't want to do Syria, you can do this. It's probably easier than doing Syria. So um, it's uh, one of the most iconic uh, attractions in uh, the East. Moving on, uh, the Kumara National Park. So Kumara National Park is, as I said earlier, it's about one hour from Portuville. And if you are doing Kudumbijala, you can do Kumara the same day or the, on the same route. Uh, it's either morning or evening as the normal uh, national park times are because that's the best time you can see the animals. And uh, this picture was actually taken by my brother, Hashan. Uh, I think it was in January this year where they saw about five or six leopards and this cute little guy was showing off his tummy and making a big eyes, making his eyes big and basically posing for the cameraman. And uh, yeah, so Kumana National Park was earlier known as Yala East and uh, it's only separated from the Kumukan Oya from Yala Block uh, 2 to yeah, the, uh, Kumana. So it's basically, you, you basically get all the animals you see in Yala, in Kumana. And the highlight of Kumana is there's hardly any jeeps. If you go to Yala, as I said earlier, you get thousands of jeeps. And in sometimes as a traffic jam as well. Um, because if they see a leopard, everyone will rush in and make noise. And the experience sadly can be a bit, um, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it won't be a very exclusive experience sometimes, not all the time. But Kumana, for instance, majority of the time you hardly see any vehicles. So basically you're just roaming around freely without any noise from other Jeeps. And you see the same animals. You see the leopard, you see the sloth bear, you see the elephant, you see tons of birds, crocodiles to the sambas to, uh, I think the last time we actually saw some, um, what was it? Uh, I think wild dogs, and uh, that was really uh, exciting. Uh, the last time we did, uh, went to Kumana, and the overall experience of Kumana is amazing. Since there's so much on offer, and the highlight or the main reason would be that it's still unexplored by the masses. So you, it's it's also a good. Uh, you change if you, you don't have to go to Yala to see the leopard, you can come to Kumana and see the leopard as well. Like people in their minds say, oh, Yala is the best place to see the leopard, but Kumana is the same, but just that Kumana is not as well known as Yala is. So uh, we are, we, I mean, personally, I've seen the leopard about, I've been to Kumana about say 10 times and out of the 10 times I've seen the leopard at least six to seven times. So there's a 70% to 80% chance of seeing the leopard in Kumana. So majority of the time you do see the leopard. And uh, yeah. For all those who love elephants from Portoville, you can go to Lahudala. It's just a 25 to 30 minute drive from Portoville. And uh, Lahudala is a great place to see elephants. It's, uh, it's a good, uh, good uh, substitute for Mineria. You don't have to go to Minneria to see elephants in Sri Lanka. You can go to Lahugala 
which is as well, which again is not that uh, busy. Mineria, for instance, during the season can be very, very busy. But Lahudela, the elephants are there most of the time year round. And uh, you get bunch like this picture was taken by, uh, by one of our colleagues uh, last year. So you see herds of elephants like this. You see plenty of crocodiles, and it's another beautiful uh, park in Sri Lanka. So moving to the final destination, which I'd like to talk about is Jaffna. So Jaffna, as we all know, is the Northern capital of Sri Lanka. It's a very, very new destination to tourism as uh, sadly for the last, from uh, 19, we had the war happening there for, the, for about 30 years. So it was a dead city in terms of tourism. But um, since 2009, after the war, slowly, slowly things have picked up. And now, now Jaffna is ready for tourism. The people are ready. The destination as a whole is ready. There are plenty of experiences to the culture, to the food, to, to everything. Jaffna has so much more and it's so different. It's because the cultural aspect to the, I mean, to the, uh, to the food, everything is totally different from what you get in the South. And that's the beauty of Sri Lanka. We have so much of difference within such a tiny island. So Jetwin has two properties in Jaffna. The Jetwin Jaffna was uh, the first renowned uh, hotel. I mean, Jetwin was the first renowned hospitality company to uh, start its operations in Jaffna. They built uh, this hotel back in 2016. And it's a 55 room hotel and uh, it was a great uh, satisfaction for us at Jetwin to build a hotel in Jaffna as we gave a lot of opportunities to the youngsters in Jaffna who hasn't really seen tourism before in their lives. And uh, we, through our Jetwin Youth Development Program, we have trained mostly most of the, most, uh, of the youth in, uh, who are interested in joining the hospitality sector and taking them to the hotel. And uh, yeah, basically giving them a new uh, opportunity in life. And also Jetwin Mahesabhavan is a new villa which was opened uh, this year in April. It's a four bedroom luxury villa. It was originally built in 1935. So Mahesa means, Mahesa is the name of the earlier owner's wife and Bhavan means house. So Mahesa's Bhavan, like Mahesa's house. It was an iconic uh, house. Sadly, it was uh, depleted after the war. Basically, uh, the rumor, the story is that the LTT were occupying that house and firing with the army. So literally when we first went to see it, it was like the, the structure was there, but the walls were with bullets and it was not a pleasant sight to see. But we uh, refurbished it, we renovated it. There's now a nice pool and it's a great luxury villa in Jaffna. And both these properties are in the heart of Jaffna. It's literally just right there in the center and it's just 10 minutes by uh, walk, well, 10 minutes walking distance from the Jaffna train station. To get to Jaffna, the easiest way is by train. It's, there's a beautiful uh, AC train which runs from uh, from Mount Lavinia to Jaffna every day. And it's about a seven hour journey. And that's the most comfortable and the most fastest way to get to Jaffna unless you're flying. So for the experiences, Jaffna is the main highlight would be the Nalu under Swami Kovil. Uh, this is literally a five minute uh, drive from uh, from the Jaffna city center. It's one of the most sacred places of worship for Hindu devotees in Sri Lanka or in the worldwide. And uh, the Nallur festival 
is the highlight. It takes place in August every year. And it's the longest uh, lasting festival in Sri Lanka. It lasts for 25 days. So just last month, we uh, finished the August, the Nallur festival. And there were so many from Colombo, from overseas, who came to see this um, beautiful, uh, uh, beautiful festival because you see a lot of processions, a lot of dancing, drumming, a lot of color. And it's really a great experience, especially for those who haven't seen such experiences elsewhere. Also, you did the Jaffna Fort. So this fort was originally built by the Portuguese. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just a 10 minute walk from, uh, from the Jaffna city center, where Jetwin Jaffna or Jetwin Mahesabhavan is located. And uh, it was originally built in the 17th century by the Portuguese. And then the Dutch uh, captured it from the Portuguese and made it to what it is today. And uh, as we all know, the Dutch were great at building forts. For example, the Doll Fort in uh, Doll was built by the Dutch. So uh, unfortunately, it's not a living fort, but um, still, I think the, uh, the government bodies have plans to make this something similar to the Doll Fort, but that will take some time until that happens. But at the moment, the shell exists. The, the grounds are there, it's beautiful for a walk. You can go on top of the ramparts and you overlook the ocean and the lagoon. And uh, yeah, it's a great place to uh, spend an evening at, or go for a leisurely walk around the fort. Moving on to the archeological uh, sites in Jaffna, the Dambatola Patuna is a 35 minute drive from Jaffna town. And this is the location where Sanjamitta, the daughter of King Ashoka in India, landed with the sapling of the Bodhi, of the Bodhi tree, which today is the Sri, uh, is the Sri Mahamodi at Anuradhapura. So this is where the, uh, this is where the princess landed. And uh, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, uh, there wasn't a temple or anything of that sort until the Navy, the, until the Sri Lanka Navy built a temple. And there is a small uh, museum sort of place where they show the history of when this, and as you can see this boat and as a small story. So it's a nice place to go and learn about how this uh, sacred tree was brought down from India. Uh, and there's a story, the folklore is that she put it in her hair and came by boat to Sri Lanka, landed here. And then uh, later on, uh, I think uh, the Sri Lankan king took the sapling and the king Devanampiyatis uh, later used the sapling to plant uh, at Shri, uh, the Sri Jaya, the Shri, Jaya Sri Mahabodhi at Anuradhapura, which is a popular tourist site in Sri Lanka. The Nagadipa is about one hour's journey, including a ferry ride. It's an island. It's, the island uh, is called Nainativu in uh, Tamil, Nagadipa in Sinhalese. And it's a place of worship for both Hindu devotees as well as Buddhist devotees. Or you can just go there and explore and see the beautiful temples and the Kovil, which is there in the island. Uh, so this, is a, this, is, this would probably take you three to four hours as you have to go, you have to drive for about 20 minutes to the uh, jetty area and then take a ferry or a speedboat. And then you spend about a couple of, maybe one hour or so, and then you get on come back. So overall the experience will take you about three to four hours, but it's worth doing it since you see, it's basically on an island, you experience the boat ride. It's a great, uh, Great feeling and ideally you have to do it early morning or late evening since it can get hot uh, during noon time, during noon. Also there's the Kirimale Pond. So Kirimale Pond has also a big uh, story where this um, person with a face like a mongoose 
apparently was he was cursed and uh, then they were he bathed in the waters of kirimale and then um, the face turned back into a human face so that's the folklore behind it and now uh, you you can still swim in it it's unfortunately uh, it's just for the males since of some uh, religious or cultural re reasons only males can uh, swim in the kirimale pond however there is a separate uh, bathing area for women next to it and this is also a great experience where you see and you um, discover these fascinating stories of the past and you wonder how uh, how uh, it was back then this is also just about a 30 minutes drive from uh, jaffna center and um, you get the kudrododa temple and ruins so kudrododa temple uh, are one of the few remaining buddhist legacies in the northern province uh, unfortunately there were 60 gray coral stones like this like this in the picture back in 1917 but i think uh, during the war most of it was destroyed and uh, today there are about 20 stupas remaining and it's one of the few buddhist uh, uh, remains which are in the jaffna peninsula today and for bird watching it's uh, a uh, great area basically with the sultans and the lagoons around Jaffna we get flamingos uh, actually this picture was uh, taken by uh, I think it was by one of the guys in Jaffna but we were there as well when this picture was taken uh, you go on the you go in a speedboat uh, on the Jaffna lagoon but once you're about 200 to about, may, may, uh, about 500 meters near the flamingos, they turn off the engine and uh, they start uh, paddling because you can't make too much of a noise or else the flamingos would just fly away. And as you can see this picture, we were quite close, but not too close. So we didn't want to disturb the flamingos, but uh, the flamingos are migratory. They normally come between October till like April and uh, you see them me around you can do boat safaris uh, the Chundikalam National Park is great for other birds other migratory birds but Chundikalam is about one and a half hours drive from Jaffna uh, Center uh, but the flamingo experience would take you just 10 minutes to get to the lagoon and then from there about a 15 minute boat ride and then you see flamingos Early morning is ideal, uh, maybe around 6.37 if you start, you can see plenty of flamingos. I think we saw about 300 to 400 flamingos. Uh, I'm not exaggerating, my dad literally counted like one, two, like we were there for like one hour and with his binos, he was just counting one, two, three. Uh, and uh, yeah, we saw about 300 to 400 flamingos uh, in Jaffna this year. And then you get the Casarina Beach. It's probably the nicest beach in Jaffna. It's about a 35 to 40 minute drive from the Jaffna city center. And the best thing about this uh, beach is the water is just very shallow. It's, and it's very calm. The ocean is very calm, very safe, perfect for kids, perfect for families to go there, spend the day, I mean, you have to spend at least two to three hours there because kids would love it to go swim around, have a picnic lunch. And it's an experience on its own. You can have a sing song. There's so many nice uh, areas to just uh, relax uh, on the beach. And uh, yeah, it's another great experience when you're in Jaffna uh, with the beach. We also get the Point Pedro from Jaffna. It's just a 45 minute drive. Uh, Point Pedro is the northernmost point of Sri Lanka. And uh, you basically drive along, uh, along the northern stretch and the coastal line and the water is beautiful. You see a lot of fishing villages. 
a lot of families and uh, this picture was taken by me. It was a bad day, unfortunately that day, as you can see, the weather looked pretty dull, but most of the time the weather, when it's bright and sunny, it's really beautiful. And you're at uh, the northernmost point of Sri Lanka, where there are many uh, destination locators, for example, like they'll say, Germany is this many kilometers away with this arrow and that. So it's a nice uh, location indicator and pretty fun to take pictures, to say that you're on top of Sri Lanka or on the top highest most point in northernmost point in Sri Lanka. And also the Delft Island. So Delft Island is a small island located about, you have to go by boat or by ferry. Uh, it's about the total journey from Jaffna would be about one and a half to two hours. And uh, once you go there, it's a great uh, destination to go and spend the day. It's a small island, so you can cover it. There are, there are some tut -tut, uh, operators over there. So you can do a day tour, um, which you see wild horses, the ancient baobab tree, which is one of the biggest trees in Sri Lanka. And also the fascinating point is, as you can see in this picture, most of the construction on Delft Island was done, was done using dead corals. So you see plenty of uh, things like this. And, and another thing is the beach in Delft Island. It's untouched, it's unpolluted. This, it's like Maldives, to be honest. Like we went there, I haven't, I went there about three or four years ago. It was almost as good as Maldives where you can walk at least 100 meters in, uh, in and the water levels are not even three or four feet. It's like a pool, the water is so clear and clean. And uh, the best part is that there's hardly any uh, people. So you have the beach to yourself, you have the island to yourself. It's great for a day out. You go there in the morning, do the, uh, to do the tour of, by to, to see the horses, get, get in the beach, yeah, get in the sea, have a swim, have lunch, and then get on uh, the ferry journey back to Jaffna in the evening. So, uh, yeah, that's about it uh, with my presentation. I think I took a bit of more time than uh, which was given, but I had to, since I wanted to explain most of the areas and uh, yeah, thank you all for joining. And uh, if you all have any questions, you all can type it in or I'll let if there's anyone who wants to ask any questions, can ask now. Do you to if you want to. Uh, ask question you can i think from your screen you have an option called uh, raise your hand and then when you raise your hand i should be able to allow you to speak or else you can uh, just type in what you have or if not you can mail it to me or my whatsapp uh, is this you can call me you can mail me and uh, yeah, if no one has anything to ask, I guess, yeah, it is very good to end the session. Okay, I think, yeah, sorry. Hi, Lal. Yeah, hi, sir. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yes. Uh, just I want to know that uh, in an island, any accommodation also is uh, available, or they have to be go uh, day trip only. Sorry, I I didn't uh, get you there. Just just you told from the Jaffna, yes. from the Jaffna, the daily island is there. Yeah. Uh, is there any accommodation in that island available, or have to go in the day trip only? 
unfortunately there's no uh, proper accommodation there you can do a camping over in delft island but it's very uh, minimalistic i mean it's there's no facility okay. in delft island to stay overnight i wouldn't recommend it un- unless you okay. want to really be a, a explorer but yeah the day day trip is the best for delft island okay and what the time of the ferry uh the ferry normally leaves around 7:38 and i think there's about two or three ferries which uh, leaves so uh, i'm not sure the exact time it it depends it varies okay. but normally it's in the morning hours and then from uh, delft island it's in the evening uh same ferry will come back uh, at evening no yes uh in the afternoon it comes back in the afternoon as well and then another one comes in the afternoon from jaffna to delft and it goes back in the evening so you have two options you can spend half a day as well as full day okay okay yeah so how much is takes time from uh, jaffna to island by ferry by ferry it's about 30 minutes okay yeah only the ferry is the option or any any other another option is there uh you can rent a speed boat if you wish to uh okay. of course the speed boat will be an additional charge whereas the ferry operates daily so that is quite reasonable and last question that's uh, what will the cost of the ferry approx approximately it's about i think a uh, few thousand rupees 3000 yeah um, i'm not 100% sure but it's about uh, 1000 to okay. 2000 rupees okay okay yeah, yeah. any restaurant also is there indian food will provide so uh, can you you can we get yeah, there aren't i mean it's it's mainly shops it's not a restaurant per se what we normally do is we we send a picnic uh, lunch or picnic breakfast with our guests who go to delta island so the the accommodation provider normally provides that uh, and uh, they do with them so they set up a nice picnic and uh, unfortunately delft doesn't have many it doesn't have any restaurant or any food options over there so how how will the uh, guest get uh, get the uh, lunch and other things if we if, uh, in the lunch time or other things they they need so, uh, we can uh, arrange that through the hotel so we can even put it in the afternoon ferry so if you do in the morning for base for example for lunch we can okay. set them up from the hotel with the packed uh, lunch uh, and then okay. uh, yeah yeah that's okay sir thank you very much sir okay thank, thank you. you very much uh, yeah does anyone else have any questions to ask you can put your hand up and ask um yeah i think that's it right then uh, thank you everyone once again for joining and uh, hope this session was informative and hope you learned something from this session i learned a uh, lot of things as well while preparing this so hope you all enjoyed it thank you for joining and we will continue with more sessions like this we will send you an email with uh, our next program so please join in and share this information with your agents with your friends with your families and uh, if there's anything please get in touch with me or anyone at jetpin we are happy to help and uh, thank you once again goodbye